let's now see the spaces in the neck. If you have a general idea about these uh, fascias, now let's see the tissue spaces in the neck. Tissue spaces, very important of neck. Why are they important? First of all, understand the infections in the neck. It could be penetrating injury, it could be any trauma, it could be any tumor, any growth, any pathology. Now, if there is an infection, there is a pus accumulation, there is an abscess, where will it drain? Where will it go? Or how to incise, where to incise, how to reach there? These are all the questions which you will understand once you understand the tissue spaces of the neck. So, over here in this figure is shown a sagittal view of the neck and few spaces are shown over here. Now, the important point over here is just look at this zoomed figure. Now, this is the obviously in this figure, this is the anterior, this is the posterior part, you can see the occipital bone. Clear? This is this is the area, these are your vertebrae and in front of the vertebrae, this area that is behind the pharynx and in front of pre-vertebral muscles. That area zoomed over here to show you the different spaces. Now, let's see over here. This is the body of vertebra. This whole is body of vertebra and between you have the IVDs, intervertebral discs. Clear? Now, anterior to the body of the vertebrae, anterior and posterior, you have a longitudinal ligaments. I repeat again, if I make a body, pedicle, lamina, spine with transverse process, anterior, posterior, this is the body, pedicle, lamina, spine sources. Then over here, anterior to the body and posterior to the body, they are known as anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments, longitudinal ligaments. So over here, what we see is this red color again, this is your anterior longitudinal ligament, clear? Now in front of this anterior longitudinal ligament, you have this bluish color that is your pre-vertebral muscle. In front of vertebrae, you have the pre vertebral muscle. Now, what was the fascia that was in front of pre-vertebral muscle? That fascia was your pre-vertebral fascia, show you with the, let us say, green color, this fascia over here. This fascia, which was in the figure orange, I made it green color, is your pre-vertebral fascia. So, you have a pre-vertebral muscle covered by a pre-vertebral fascia. Clear? Now, anterior to this, this this whole area is your pharynx. This whole area is your pharynx. Fine. So, you have pharynx over here. This is the muscle of pharynx. And this one behind over here is the outermost layer of the pharynx, which is known as the buccopharyngeal fascia. Which is known as the buccopharyngeal fascia. Bucco, why? Because it is continuous with the buccinator muscle that we studied in the muscle of the face. That is a loose areolar sort of tissue. It is actually nothing but a loose areolar tissue. Buccopharyngeal fascia. Out, outer wall of the pharynx. So, the mucosa, you will have some mucosa, you will have muscle, then you have this loose areolar tissue. Now, you can see this white line, the white line. I won't color it again. I won't color it separate because that uh, will destroy the whole meaning of this diagram. That white area is between the buccopharyngeal fascia, is between the buccopharyngeal fascia and your pre-vertebral fascia and your pre-vertebral fascia. So that will be which space that is behind the pharynx, so we will call it a retropharyngeal space. That, that was the motive of this whole figure, that space is known as a retropharyngeal space between buccopharyngeal fascia, that is the outermost uh, layer of the pharynx and the pre-vertebral fascia which is covering the pre-vertebral muscles of the vertebrae. That is small space. Just to show you where is the retropharyngeal space. Now, the next figure will tell you all the spaces and their extensions. Very important figure over here. Again a sagittal view. Again a sagittal view. Now, trace all the layers. Trace all the layers. You can see over here number one investing layer. Investing the whole neck region, like a collar, investing layer. Then you can see this number two pretracheal fascia. You can see the extent of pretracheal fascia. Superiorly, it is not even reaching the higher, it is 
somewhere below hide around the thyroid cartilage and inferiorly you can see it is merging with this vessel the arch of aorta adventitia around the arch of aorta then look at this number 3 that is your prevertebral fascia right in front of the vertebrae and look at its lower most extent that is at the written over a T4 then it fuses with the anterior longitudinal ligament these whole things we have already discussed clear now this is a tissue spaces of the neck is a uh, combination of uh, head and neck with the thorax so you need to know its general anatomy of the thorax also how to divide the mediastinum so this anteriorly if we understand if we take a lateral view of the sternum then this will be the manubrium body and ziphoid and posterior you have this vertebrae posterior you have this vertebrae it is between the manubrium and the body what we call anteriorly as the sternal angle and posteriorly it is lying between t4 and t5 t4 and t5 so this imaginary line which i made horizontally from the sternal angle anteriorly to the disc between t4 t5 posteriorly divides your whole mediastinum into superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum that is the all extra knowledge which you which you need to know right now superior and the inferior mediastinum then as you all know in the thorax thoracic cavity we have the pericardium with the heart inside it so now this inferior mediastinum is divided by this pericardium and heart into anterior posterior and this area included in the pericardium as the middle mediastinum that is all that is how we divide the mediastinum a brief overview over here because we have to continue this tissue spaces in the neck into the mediastinum and you all know that the distincting point or the structure with separates thorax from the abdomen is your diaphragm so here we have a diaphragm also here we have a diaphragm also i hope this is clear i repeat again take a imaginary plane between the manubrium and the body of the sternum that is known as sternal angle and that vertebral level is between t4 t5 now that imaginary plane divides the mediastinum into superior and inferior superior will remain superior inferior mediastinum is now divided by a pericardium which is having the heart into anterior middle and posterior mediastinum and below you have the diaphragm superiorly to all this superior to all this you have the neck spaces that is why general knowledge of this was important right over here now let's see what happens so you can trace these three fascia in the figure the investing layer the pretracheal and the prevertebral we have removed the carotid sheath that is not important over here and in this figure you can see this bl light blue color trachea going down we have removed the esophagus and the pharynx also but if it was present then we can show it with the say again the green color this would have been the position of pharynx esophagus going down down like this green color now look at the spaces name of the spaces between layer number 1 and 2 that is investing layer and the pretracheal fascia you have the space known as pretracheal space this whole space is pretracheal space if any infection is in the pretracheal space that will go down into the superior mediastinum and into the anterior mediastinum please note it down pretracheal space pretracheal space and from there it will go to superior mediastinum from there into the anterior mediastinum anterior mediastinum is a part of inferior mediastinum that we have already discussed so pretracheal space now look at the space between the number 2 and number 3 that is between pretracheal fascia and the prevertebral fascia that whole space is your retropharyngeal and parapharyngeal space because remember that green line was your pharynx and esophagus so that whole space between the pretracheal fascia covering the trachea and prevertebral fascia will be behind the pharynx and around and around the pharynx so we call it or i would make it with the say black color only this whole space over here this blackish color whole space will be your retropharyngeal that we just saw in the previous figure 
parafaryngeal paratracheal any space which you can think of around the trachea and esophagus and pharynx now infection in these spaces or any abscess or anything in these spaces will continue where right into the superior mediastinum that is above this imaginary or dotted line that will go into the posterior mediastinum that can reach easily up till the diaphragm so this infection over here can reach up till your diaphragm it can irritate the diaphragm this is a continuation of these spaces now last not the least this label number 4 over here this is which space this is a very thin space normally it is not there but it only occurs see uh, supposedly there is any pathology there is any infection supposedly you have tb of cervical vertebrae in the body of cervical vertebrae then obviously the infection in the bone that will create pus or abscess that will trickle in front of the vertebrae now if it trickles in front of the vertebrae it will push the pre vertebral fascia anteriorly so this is space number 4 is your pre vertebral space pre vertebral space this what is the inferior extent of this pre vertebral space is only up till t4 it can't go below t it can't go below t4 so if there is any abscess for any pathology coming from the vertebral column due to any reason in the cervical area in the neck area anteriorly if it is pushing it will try to push the pre vertebral fascia anteriorly but it won't pierce the pre vertebral fascia until and unless there is some tearing or some rupture in the pre vertebral fascia if the amount of the pus or abscess is small then that pus or abscess will remain confined behind the pre vertebral fascia inferiorly only up till the t4 if the amount of the pus increases only then it will rupture the pre vertebral fascia it will come into the retropharyngeal space it can come down to the posterior mediastinum superior posterior up till diaphragm normal situations it remains confined in that pre vertebral space so that was about the tissue spaces in the neck and their clinically applied very very important 